Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Of all the uh, songs I wrote for Schoolhouse Rock, that's sort of me. <laughs> I've been very lucky, and uh, although it's not entirely true, I did do a whole day's work in my life when I was very young. <laughs> Things like picking cotton, weeding onions, farm work. That's hard work. But one day, after joining the high school band, I thought, wow, this is great stuff where you play with other kids and they've all got different horns and it fits together like a glove. And I said to my parents, I'm going to be a musician. <laughs> <laughs> they were cool. <laughs> they didn't say you better learn typing. <laughs> So that began my career in music. Now, in 19, about 69, I, I had a house in Pennsylvania, a wife and an eight-year-old daughter. I was trying to make a living as an independent freelance musician operating in New York City. I had this call to have a meeting with the president of a little ad agency where I was sort of known already. McCaffrey and McCall, he said, my little boys can't memorize the times tables, but they sing along with Jimi Hendrix and the Rolling Stones, so why don't we put it to rock music and we'll call it multiplication rock. Hmm. Well, what do you think? And I said, yeah, could be good. I'll give it a try. Well, I was highly motivated by this challenge and he he said you know we'll pay you if we like the song he had been looking for someone in new york city to set the multiplication tables to music so i knew it was very important to do it right and to do it well so i went home and thought i wouldn't let myself go to the piano and start writing i wanted to think about it first and i looked in some math books i had something about new math and uh, other decimal systems, things like that. <clears throat> but the first thing is to write a good song or else it'll be curtains. Goodbye, Bob. <laughs> so I hit upon the idea, let's pick a number, three. That's a good number. And I sat down at the piano and I started fooling around. It took me two weeks before I delivered a song to the, uh, the team up at the advertising agency in New York City. This is what they heard. Three is a magic number. Yes, it is. It's a magic number. Somewhere in the ancient mystic trinity three has a magic number. The past and the present and the future Faith and hope and charity The heart and the brain and the body Give me three as a magic number Well, it takes three legs to make a tripod Or to make a table stand it takes three wheels to make a vehicle called a tricycle. Every triangle has three corners. Every triangle has three sides, no more, no less. You don't have to guess. When it's three, you can see it's a magic number. Well, a man and a woman had a little baby. Yes, they did. They had three. It's a magic number. Okay, kids. <laughs> so much for magic. Now it's time to take care of business. I know you counted by twos, you counted by threes, you counted by 
fives and counted by tens, but today we're gonna count by threes. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. Do it again. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. Multiples of three come up three times in each set of ten. In the first ten, you get three, six, nine, and in the teens, it's twelve, fifteen, and eighteen, and in the twenties, twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven, and it comes out even on thirty. Now we're gonna multiply back from three times ten. Three times ten is thirty. Three times nine is twenty-seven. Three times eight is 24, 3 times 7 is 21, 3 times 6 is 18, 3 times 5 is 15, 3 times 4 is 12, and 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 2 is 3, and 3 times 1. What is it? Hey, it's a magic number. Well, over the years, I've used these songs to visit elementary schools and get the kids to help me with the multiplication part, okay? So one more time, kids. I'm counting on all you kids out there. Because let's count by threes. Take it all the way up to 30. Here we go. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. Do it again. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. Now the multiples of 3 come up 3 times in each set of 10. In the first 10, you get 3, 6, 9, and in the teens, it's 12, 15, and 18, and in the 20s, 21, 24, 27, and it comes out even on 30. But now we're going to multiply backward from 3 times. Ten. Three times ten is three times nine is a three times eight is a three times seven is a three times six is three times five is three times four is three times three is nine and three times two is six and three times a one what is it? Three. Yeah! <laughs> That's a magic number. It's a magic number. <laughs> it's a magic <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'd always wanted to write songs for kids. You know, I, I loved children, although I only had one. And that was my opportunity. They loved this song. And he said, write more, write more. It took me about, I'd say, two or three years, and I wrote 11 songs on the multiplication tables. I tried to make each song different. That was about the only song I ever wrote with only two chords. <laughs> you know, I was a jazz musician, and I'd written a lot of songs, but most of them were quite complicated. You know, what I call extravagant love songs or songs that I would want to sing in my own performances. But by 1969, I had acquired quite a few skills uh, accompanying other singers, singing and entertaining myself, leading a little jazz band, uh, arranging music, and also studio experiences. I've done things like co-produce albums with another guy. So I was ready for anything and uh, as time proceeded, we recorded them. And uh, by the time it was over, in uh, 1972 and 3, there were lots of parental groups who were uh, waging a battle, uh, a protest against the uh, cartoons that they were showing on Saturday morning to children. You know, most of them were violent and... and uh, and they, you know, they said, can't you give our children something better? Well, 
the ABC network just happened to be a client of, of this little ad agency. And they took it over one day, my recording of three is a magic number. Suddenly, we're on television. <laughs> my life became quite hectic because every song from that point on had to be exactly three minutes. And once we were on TV, I became the uh, automatic musical director of the whole project, the musical director. And I was on salary, and I was making money as the singer, as the arranger, as the songwriter. And I was doing quite well. It was a, a big highlight in my life as far as finance goes, and also rewards. It was great to be reaching children. And we had a captive audience, you know. Typical scenario, the parents, the mother probably has to do some errands and she tunes him in on ABC and says, now eat your cereal and stay on channel ABC and I'll be back in 40 minutes. <laughs> so every 30 minutes or so they see these little three minute songs. And uh, they didn't know it, but they were getting educated. <laughs> so we did grammar and we sort of interrupted grammar in 19, 76, the bicentennial. Actually, we hadn't yet written a preposition song. Everybody tried to write a preposition song, but nobody liked what they wrote. <laughs> By then, we had, a, we had a songwriting team of three or four people, counting colleagues of mine. One thing about being the musical director of a TV show, I was able to hire all my jazz friends. We went on to America Rock <laughs> for the Bicentennial. And uh, later on also, a, a group in Chicago invented a play on Schoolhouse Rock with their own plot about a school teacher's first day. And I must say, after all these years, when I avoided becoming a teacher, <laughs> little did I know that through the magic of cartoons on television, I would become an educator. But nowadays, I respect and admire teachers so much, you know, for their daily commitment. You know, that was one thing I wanted to avoid, having to be in school <laughs> five days a week. <laughs> I, I led a more unregimented life, so. <laughs> but now, I admire them, and actually, school teachers and parents have kept Schoolhouse Rock alive, even though it was only, a, it was on TV 13 years in uh, 73 to 86, and then a little bit more in the 90s when some of the kids grew up and became program directors for ABC. They brought it back, and we finished up. We did a, we had Science Rock, and then we had uh, Money Rock, teaching kids about finances, and uh, we finally finished a preposition song. I lucked out, I, I wrote a preposition song. It's too hard to sing. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I think, did I say everything? <laughs> I don't have my watch. What time is it? I don't want to take too much time. That's One more song? Conjunction, junction, wash your function. Hooking up those little words and phrases and clauses. Conjunction, junction, wash your function. I got three favorite cars that get most of my job done. Conjunction, junction, wash your function. I got and button R. They'll get you pretty far. Dig this. And. That's an additive like this and that. And then there's but when you say, mommy, I won't do this, but I could do that. And then there's R when you have a choice, this R or that. 
and button R will get you pretty far. Sing it, baby. Can you hop, shot, hop, shot, hop, Hooking up two box cars and making them run right like these. Bread and butter, milk and honey, peas and rice. Hey, that's nice. Dirty but happy, digging and scratching, losing your shoe and a button or two. He was poor but honest, sad but true. Ooh, boo hoo, boo hoo. See, conjunction, junction, what's your fun? Looking two words to one, if you should have a choice. Like this, you might say, either now or later. Neither now nor ever. Hey, that's clever. Eat this or that, both thin or fat. <laughs> Never ever did you that, I'm already too fat. Ah, conjunction, junction, what's your function? Hooking up phrases and clauses that sort of have to balance like these. Out of the frying pan and into the fire. He cut loose the sandbag, but the balloon wouldn't go any higher. Let's go up to the mountains or down to the seas. You should always say thank you, or at least say please. Conjunction, junction, watch your function. Telling a big long story like the one I'm about to lay on you now. In the mornings, when I'm usually wide awake, I love to take a walk through the gardens and down by the lake, where I often see a duck and a drake. And I wonder what they would say if they could speak. Quack, 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 quack. Sing it now. Ah! Can you action, junction? What's your own function? Hooking up those little words. Making them function. Conjunction, junction. How's your fun? I'm going to get you there if you're very careful. Conjunction, junction. What's your fun? I'm gonna get you there if you're very, very careful. Sing it. 